praise the living God. Hallelujah. We thank the almighty God for bringing us together again. Today is Thursday, the 24th of September. It's a midweek service. Let us pray and look into God's word together. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for bringing us together again on this platform, Lord, to look into your word, to pray and to fellowship. We pray in the name of Jesus. Bless the service. Speak to us, especially on your calling. As many people are seeking and waiting that you call them into your kingdom. We pray that let this message go far and wide. And let it touch hearts and let it bring people into your kingdom. We also pray for those who are already in the kingdom. Give them the wisdom not to give the enemy a foothold into their lives. Speak through your servant tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As usual, God bless you for tuning in. And um, what we'll be doing is to share the link so that other people can also listen to this uh, broadcast tonight. And I know that now we will never remain the same. We will be, we will be blessed indeed. Uh, so let's spend 30 seconds to share the link that, so that people can also tune in as usual. That is some of the things we can do uh, on this platform so that many people will hear the message of the gospel. Especially as people are looking up to God to, for Him to call Him them into His kingdom, we pray that their heart desires to be met. Those of us already in the kingdom are so blessed, and we avail ourselves for God to use us to bring many people into His kingdom. And that when our time comes, we will leave this world and be with the Lord in paradise. Thank you, Lord, for saving us tonight I pray. The title of our discussion tonight is The Callings of God. In particular we'll be looking at the new birth. It's a call God calls people to be born again and also the calling from darkness to light. The calling from Satan's power to God's power and we've already looked at the calling that's this one for only Christians to be holy. So we will not touch on that. We will be touching on the broader callings. As uh, every human being is being called by God to be born again, every human being is being called up, uh, upon by God to move from darkness or turn from darkness to light, and everyone is being called to turn from the Satan's power or he, or his influence into the power of the Almighty God. Uh, in the news, I listened to I think that was yesterday, uh, a fetish priest or what some of you will call a voodoo priest. Or some of you call Malam or traditional healer said that he uh, was waiting for God to call him from following darkness to following Christ. <coughs> Very interesting that he said after saying a whole lot of things what he can do and how he can help people. Uh, he said that he, he believes there is God and that he's waiting that one day he will call him into the light so that he also start to share the gospel and to tell people his life experience. It's very interesting to hear an unbeliever, a Buddhist priest, a fetish priest, a traditional healer, uh, making such a beautiful confession and saying that he's waiting for the Almighty God to call him to one day come to Christ and to preach the gospel. He also condemned or criticized believers who have left God's way to follow the enemy. That's Satan. If I said he had about a, a hundred pastors who, who come to him for power. And he doesn't even understand why they should do that. But again, that is his job. So it's really sad that people who are in Christ sometimes not really value their calling. And what Christ has done for them. And that they go to other places. But of course our focus is the calling. The general calling. And this man is waiting that the Almighty God should call him. Let me also say that the temptation for the saints, that the people of God, to give the devil a foothold in their lives is very common nowadays uh, for various reasons. The result is that many uh, believers are not under the power, the influence of God. 
And as St. Paul puts it in the book of uh, 1 Timothy 5.15, many have turned to follow the devil. Many have turned from Christ and they have followed them. So these are internal staff, Christians, within the kingdom of God, within the church. Many have turned uh, and, and to follow the devil. But today our focus is on God's calling. How God is calling every human being to be born again. That's to receive their new birth. John 3, 3 to 5, Matthew 18, 1 to 9. And also how God is calling everyone to have their eyes open so that they will see the glory of the Almighty God display in Christ Jesus. God is also calling people to turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God, to receive forgiveness of sins, and to receive a place among those who are sanctified by faith. So as usual, I'll be encouraging you to respond to God's call. Maybe some of you, uh, you are not really born again. There are some of you too, you've given them me a foothold in your life. And perhaps there are some of you are still following the deeds of darkness. And uh, we will be taking uh, these themes. And I'll take time to explain because it is a teaching service, sort of. So to be born again or to receive the new bread, what it means and how that can be done. And also how to turn from darkness to light and how to turn from the power of Satan to the power of God. And how to receive your reward alongside uh, all the faithful men and women who, are, who live for the Lord. So let's see. Uh, first, our main text, we'll read uh, Acts chapter 26, verse 12 to uh, uh, 16. And uh, uh, what we are coming to read, Paul was telling the leaders... Uh, what he heard from the Lord Jesus. And I, I, I particularly really like this account. Because in chapter 9 of Acts, of the book of Acts, we don't really uh, get to know what uh, Christ told Paul that much. But here we see what the Lord said to Paul. So Acts 26, 12 to uh, 18 says, On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priest about Ninkin Agrippa. As I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying in Aramic, So, Saul, so why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the gods. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting me, the Lord replied. 16. Now get up and stand up on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. Normally when people are sent, sometimes they are very vulnerable, so they need special protection from God. And many Christians and ministers, are not. they don't have that strong faith in God that God will protect them. Hence, like what that fetish priest uh, confers, many turn to other sources for, for power and protection. And you shouldn't do that. God will protect you. We continue. I am sending you to them, 18, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins. And a place among those who are sanctified by faith. Amen. So that was Paul's assignment in summary telling uh, the leaders he was sharing the gospel with them but again he started from his own text so the calling to be born again is, is quite ex uh, clear here or uh, to receive the new birth and Jesus in Jesus word let's turn to John 3 verse 3 to 5 John 3 Jesus replied very truly I tell you no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again verse 4 how can someone be born again when they are old? Nicodemus asks. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born again. 5. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit of God. Flesh gives uh, give birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to a spirit. So unless someone is born again, you cannot enter. You cannot see the kingdom. Enter the kingdom. You cannot see peace, joy, 
in righteousness in the Holy Ghost, you cannot enter the paradise of God. Our Lord spoke the same here on Matthew in Matthew 18, verse 1 to 9. In answering a question, he tells us the need for us to change, to be converted, to become like little children. Else we can never enter the kingdom of heaven. So let's read. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 18. Uh, let's read some verses there. Verse 1. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and, and asked him, Who then is the greatest uh, in the kingdom of heaven? He called, Jesus called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Unless you change, unless you are, you, you, you are converted, unless you change to become, okay, you can never enter the kingdom. It is the same uh, concept the Lord was discussing with Nicodemus in the book of John 3, verse 4. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and whoever welcomes one said child in my name welcomes me so here the message is very clear that children unless you are born again unless you change willingly you change uh, you cannot enter the kingdom of God so children when are very young do not desire authority so we are looking at some of the features of a born again person that you must apply yourself to so when you look at children, when they are very young, they do not desire authority. No. They do not regard outward distinctions. They are free from malice. I'm talking about proper kids. They are teachable and willingly depend on their parent. So that's what God wants us to be like. That we don't desire authority, but that we, we are also free from malice. We don't do anything bad, that we are teachable, that God can teach us, and that we must be willing to depend on God, that is to put our faith in God. Let's also say that it is true that uh, the children soon begin to show other dispositions and other ideas are taught them at an early age. So there are some kids, although they may be three or four, you cannot really call them kids because of what they do. So we do acknowledge that, but a proper child may be who is a year old or under or two years, you know, they depend on the mom, the dad, they have faith in them, they believe in them. I think I was sharing this with a brother the other day, how how uh, Enoch, his first son's faith in him, helped he himself to have a very good relationship with the Almighty God. It goes this way. It is said that uh, Enoch, the book of Genesis 5, talks about him and the book of uh, Jude talks about him as well. I mean, his first son really believed in him. And he trusted in him. And because of that, their relationship was so good. So one day he said to himself, if this is how my son treats me, puts his faith in me, and we have a relationship, this beautiful relationship from today, I'm also going to put my faith in the living God. He will be my father. I'm going to trust him the way this son of mine has trusted me. And as we know, Enoch walked faithfully, faithfully before God. And the Bible says that he was no more, meaning he was raptured. And so, and so God wants us to really change, to acquire the marks of childhood. Uh, where we are free from malice, we have, we have teachable spirit, and willingly we depend on God for uh, everything. We need to be daily renewed in the spirit of our minds that we may become simple and humble as little children willing to be the least of all. That is what it means to, to be born again. You change to become like a child. So if someone slaps you here, you turn here to the person, or you go and cry to God. You don't fight, right? You don't plot. You don't plan evil. You depend on God, and you allow God to lead you. And there are many, many other uh, qualities that we should also or marks that we should acquire as a people of God. So being born again or to be converted or changed or to repent also offers many benefits. One, that, that then we shall enter the kingdom of God. So this priest, uh, a fetish priest, wants to make it to heaven. He needs to be born again. The Bible says that then we will become the greatest in the God's kingdom. 
another verse. Uh, 3 to 5 also says that whoever welcomes a born again believer welcomes Jesus. So let's turn to that chapter um, uh, 8. So the, 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 the 3 says, Truly I tell you, unless you change, unless you change and become like little children, you can you never enter the kingdom of God. Therefore, whoever takes the lonely position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of God. And whoever welcomes one, one such a child in my name welcomes me. So when you, you welcome a genuine believer, it's the same as you welcoming uh, Jesus. Now, the, the born again child has two more, uh, some benefit that Christ mentions here. Uh, here the verse 4, the verse 6. If you tempt a believer to stumble or sin, you put yourself in danger. That's the verse 6. And this is how Christ pushed it. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me to stumble, it will be better for them to have a large uh, a, 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 a millstone and hang around their neck and be drawn in the depths of the sea. We also have one special grace for the born again believer. Verse 10 says, See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that there are angels in heaven always see the face of my father who is in heaven so the born again believer is also protected by god and they have they have angels who protect them hebrews 1 14 also tells us that that angels are ministering spirit sent to serve those who will inherit eternal life so when you are born again that's it god keeps you and protects you and this is a calling that god is calling people to be born again, you must change. You see, when people hear a message like this, you know, to be born again, they just want to leave everything to God. You must desire and change to have the marks of a child. So a child is dependent upon the parent. A child is teachable. A child does not plot evil. A child, you know, just look at some of those marks of a child. You must change. You must be converted. You must be born again and become like a little children. If not, then you shall not enter the kingdom of God. You cannot be protected by God. And uh, our main text also says that God wants people's eyes to be open, to see the glory of God displayed in Christ. Yeah, to open their eyes. Oh, yes, Paul, God told Paul that, 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 that your eyes be open to see. The glory of God displayed in Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 3, 6. Let's go there. 2 Corinthians 4, 3, 6. Again, St. Paul picks up this theme and says this about uh, the, what we are discussing. Verse 3. It says, 2 Corinthians 4, 3. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. So those who are perishing when we preach the gospel... Uh, the gospel is like it's really nothing to them, so is they are veiled. They, they are, their face, uh, their faces are covered. They, that they, they cannot see, and, and and it's a sign that they are perishing. I think I've told the church several that any time we preach the gospel and you don't understand, you don't appreciate, you become rebellious. It is a sign of lack of grace, because when there is grace, you see your heart is warm strangely, and you respond. To the Lord Jesus Christ. So verse 4. And he gives a reason. The God of this age. That is Satan has blinded the minds of unbelievers. So that they cannot see the light of the gospel. That displays the glory of Christ. Who is the image of God. So Satan has blinded some people's mind. That they cannot see. The mind must, must, must see. They cannot see. When they hear the gospel. There is no sort of light at all in their minds. Five, for we for what we preach is not ourselves but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servant for Christ's sake. So preachers must, must not preach themselves they must preach Christ because as we give Christ to people that is uh, when they will be born again. Gift Christ. I normally tell pastors that I talk to often that always give the people, Jesus Christ, and let Christ be their Lord. Set men and women who become good church members because Christ will be their Lord. And they will be also baptized into the body of Christ. They will be blessed. 
don't receive the Holy Spirit. So we don't preach ourselves and we give people Christ and Him alone. Six, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made His light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's <laughs> glory displayed in the face of Christ. In the beginning there was darkness all over the, 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 uh, the, the surface of the, of the earth. And God spoke, let there be light. And there was light. And, and that same light is what uh, comes upon people as they put their faith in the Lord Jesus. To open their eyes to see how, how, how do people, people's eyes uh, get open. How? By prayers. We pray and we teach them Ephesians 1.18. Paul takes up this theme and then, and then he said this. I pray that the eyes, I'm reading Ephesians 1 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the, in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him, Christ, to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. Uh, verse 15, he says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your love for all God's people. I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. The glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So that you may know him better. 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Prayers. And he has to say. As St. Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus. That their eyes will be enlightened. And so we pastors and those uh, 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 who are leaders of the church and true believers must always pray that, oh Lord, help people to see your glory in Christ Jesus. Help people. And if you have a pastor praying for you this way, you realize that you have, and you respond when we pray and there is no faith, nothing happens. So you must receive and you see that your eyes will begin to open. But when you rebel and resist, our prayers will mean nothing to you. Okay, that's how it works. Now, let's hear, say that a man's prayer for others are a very fair thermometer of his own religious condition. What he asks for them will largely indicate what he thinks best for himself, his own desires, and how he asks it will show the firmness of his own faith and the favor of his own feeling. Paul prayed for the Ephesians that their eyes of which would mean that he himself, his eyes, his eyes had opened. Okay, so 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 a preacher man who tells you more about Christ, salvation, heaven, and hell, and to live a good life tells you his desire or the condition uh, of his heart or his religious condition. Uh, elsewhere in chapter ten of the book of Romans, Paul prayed that he said that he wished that he himself was cursed so that his people Israel will come to Christ. And so what you say, what you do, uh, most of the time, uh, really uh, tell the condition of your heart, of your life. And Paul, having had his eyes open, prayed that ah, the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. And every Sunday, I give you Christ. I tell you to put your faith in Christ, to live a holy life, to live a good life. Stay away from sin and make sure you make it to heaven. Uh, a man's prayer, a woman's prayer for others, uh, a very fair thermometer of his own or her own religious condition. And what he or she asks for them will largely indicate what he thinks best for himself. And so what I know is best for me is what I will tell. And Christ is everything. So every uh, occasion every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, we tell people Christ and to live well and make sure that you make it to heaven. So to have the eyes of your heart open prayer, 
is needed. And some of you, you are fortunate. The church prays for all of you three times a week. Uh, in addition to our normal services on uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sunday, the church has a group of people that pray for you three times a week. And those of you who humble yourself and receive God's grace, you realize that you will go so far. Don't harden your heart. Soften your heart and receive that which God is giving by faith to open the eyes. And God is calling people to, to have their eyes open. Let's look at the third one. God is all calling people to turn from darkness to light. The book of Colossians 1.13, Paul writing to the church there told them this. Colossians 1.13, For he, that is Christ, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. For he has rescued us. He has taken us from, from the dominion of, of darkness into, into the kingdom of his Son. So God wants people to also come out from darkness and to come to light. And darkness mainly has to do with evil deeds. The book of John 3 uh, verse 18 will tell us why people love darkness instead of light. So uh, it says that, or 19, John 3, 19 says, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen it may be seen plainly that what he, but that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So that that is the verdict. Christ has brought light into the world and is calling people to move away from darkness. But the text tells us that people love darkness because their deeds are evil, and that and that call is there. This uh, fetish priest who made that confession, yes, he is waiting for the day that God will call him uh, to move. Or to turn from darkness to light. Uh, what this means is that he should stop every evil deed. He knows that the power he's using are really, really evil. And he's waiting for someone to preach the gospel to him. For someone to go to him and say, you, God loves you. Stop what you are doing and come and follow Jesus Christ. That is why we need more preachers. And preachers must dedicate themselves to the preaching of the gospel. Personally, I think exclusively... Other social uh, action initiatives to be taken upon by other church members and those who have been called and anointed to preach the gospel must focus on the gospel. Paul said in the book of, I think not, the church leaders in the book of Acts uh, 6 that it's not good that we wait upon tables, we wait on tables and neglect the word of God and prayer. Those who have been anointed must preach the gospel. If they have not been anointed, yes, there are many other things that may not. I, I require an anointing that you can do in the church. There are a lot of social action activities that you can do, but those who have been anointed must not wait on tables, but that they should focus on prayer and the, uh, and the preaching of the gospel. This man is waiting for someone to uh, do that. So how do people turn from darkness to light? Simple, they should stop every bad thing. They should stop every bad thing they will uh, be turned from darkness to light. That's what the word of God tells us. When you stop evil, stop malice, you are, you are moving yourself from darkness to light, to good things, right? And, 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 and this call is there. God is calling everyone to turn from darkness. Also from the power of Satan to the power of God. God is calling people to turn from Satan's power. What this means is that they should forsake the use of Satan's power and that they should turn to God. They should forsake the use of Satan's power. Uh, and to, so what that means is that they should stop sacrificing to demons' spirits. They should stop practicing any of the occult practices. Uh, um, and we know that most witch doctors, malas, fetish priests, voodoo's, uh, as we said, they are waiting on God to call them into, into the kingdom of God so that they stop uh, those uh, practices. And it's, it's sad that some Christians uh, also go to these places for protection and, and favor and all that. But I see this as nonsense. If you have come to Christ, the Savior of the world, if you have come to the Lord, the judge of all, where else do you want to go? 
If you submit yourself to these things, they will harm you and your life will uh, be destroyed. You will not make it to heaven. They should turn from the power of Satan and to the power of God. Let's read Exodus chapter 8 verse 16 and we see the two powers that work there. Exodus 8 16. Uh, that through Moses, God's power was displayed and through the uh, magicians of Egypt, Satan's power also was displayed and always God's power will triumph over that of the enemy. So in Exodus 8, 16 to 18 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the ground and throughout the land of Egypt the dust will become nuts. They did this and when Aaron stretched out his hand with the staff and struck the dust of the ground. Nut came on people and animals. All the dust throughout the land of Egypt became nut. But when the Egyptians tried, but when the magicians of the Egyptians tried to produce nuts by their secret arts, they could not, since the nuts were on people and animals everywhere. The magician said to Pharaoh. This is the finger of God. When they saw the power of God displayed through Moses and Aaron, they said, we cannot do this. This is the power of the Almighty God. And so that conversion wasn't enough. They should have been born again. They should have turned from using Satan's power and come to uh, Christ. Uh, the book of Acts chapter 6 verse 12 we see the same thing there, God's power being displayed so powerfully. God's power being displayed so powerfully. Now here, Paul had to uh, discipline a man, a sorcerer, who was trying to challenge the power of God. Acts 3, 6. He was trying to challenge the uh, power of God. Verse 6 says, They traveled through the whole island until they came to Patfold. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet, Named Baal. This all, all false prophets are sorcerers. The source of their power is not from the Almighty God. That is why we call them false prophets. They will never turn you to Christ. They will rather display that false power to you, to confuse you, to amaze you. But trust me, they can never do anything to change your life. Now, if you know anyone who follows a false prophet, look at their life. They are always in a mess. They can never live a holy life. And the only way forward for them is to turn to Christ. And to turn to his true servant who will tell them, live a holy life, give your life to Christ, and let him alone be your Lord. False prophet. So this man called named by Jesus, verse 7 says, who was an attendant of the proconsul, a Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. Like this precious priest who is waiting for God to call him. This man also wanted to hear the word of God. And as I speak, there are countless millions, maybe billions of people who are waiting that someone should preach the gospel to them so that they will have faith in Christ and be saved. Verse 8 says, But El Elimas the sufferer, for that was his name, for that is what his name means, opposed as Paul and Barnabas and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimas and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. The enemy always used to see and fear and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind for a time, not even it, not even able to see the light of the sun. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, and he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of God. God is calling men and women to turn. From the power of Satan to the power of God. And that the power of God comes upon people as they are born again. God gives them his Holy Spirit to empower them to do his will. Now when you follow Satan, his promise is always he will do this for you. So he gives you power that you will use it your way. And in most cases, people use it to do evil. But when you follow Christ, he gives you the spirit of the Father to do the will of the Father. 
and the will of the Father becomes your will and so that you live a good life because our wills are subjective and they are very uh, selfish. There is no power greater than that which comes from God. If you are born again, don't be afraid of any other power. Live a holy life. God will protect you. God will be with you. The man was in big trouble. People should forsake anything that they do to get power from Satan. And they should come to Christ. Let's perhaps read Acts chapter 8 verse uh, another 8. We see the power of God at work there. And how um, a lot of people somehow have been brainwashed. We're talking about what happened when Paul and his team visited uh, a town called Lystria and Derby in those days. The power of God was so uh, at work that the people thought it was something else. Let's read the text so that we can we understand. Then Acts 14, 8. Open your Bibles and let's go there. Acts 14, 8. Read from verse 8. In Lystra there sat a man who was lame. He had been there, he had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as Paul was preaching. Paul looked directly at him and saw that he had faith to be healed and called out, stand up on your feet. At that moment, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lycaonian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zoes and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief a speaker, the priest of Zoe, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. Some people's mind, all that they know uh, is about the ghosts, the demons. Even when they see the power of God at work, they want to give the credit to some demons. Listen to what Paul said. Verse 14, but when the apostles Paul and Barnabas heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, friends, why do you uh, do this? We too are only human beings like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God, who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Look at that. He said, we to our only human beings like you. We are bringing you the good news. Telling you to turn from these worldly things to the living God. Who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. In the past, God let all nations go their own way. Yet, he has not left himself without a testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their season. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing uh, to them. Brothers and sisters, there are many people, the enemy has blinded them to the extent that even if God is doing something good in their lives, they think it is their gods, their, their demons, their, their, their magic art or sorcery that or witchcraft spirit that is helping them. And here Paul was telling them that look, we have come here to give you the good news, to turn you from all these worthless things to the living God, the creator of the universe, the creator of the heavens and the earth and the sea. He provided you with rain from heaven and all that you need. Come to him. That the gospel caused people to turn from the power of Satan to that of God. Forsake the use of Satan power like the magicians and be filled with the Holy Ghost. At Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 13, we've, we've read this several, but again, uh, looking at the context that we are having our discussion is good. We read at Deuteronomy 18, verse uh, 9 to 12, again, practices that invokes spirits and that gives people uh, the power of Satan, Satan should be stopped and then let people be born again and receive the Holy Spirit so that they receive the power of God to do the will of God in this world and that is a calling so when you are born again that's the nature. so in the Old Testament God through Moses warned his people Deuteronomy 18 9 when he entered the land the Lord your God 
is given you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in fire, who practices divination, sorcery, interpret omens, engages in witchcraft, or cast spells, or who is a medium or spirit, or who consult the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable uh, to the Lord. And because of these same detestable practice, the Lord your God will drive out all those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. When you do some of these things, you invoke Satan and you invoke his evil powers upon your life. And many people now are engaged in that. I still have a someone that we've not treated. I mean, how dangerous it is to be talking to spirits and to acquire Satan's power. Brothers and sisters, sometimes it's not easy to get rid of them. I've talked to quite a few people who found themselves in such situation. If you have been doing that, stop and repent and rely on God and be born again. God will give you his Holy Spirit to preach the gospel and to do his work. Jesus tells us in the book of Luke 4, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. That is, that is the calling. And this evening, we are focusing on this as well. That fittest man, that voodoo man, he says he's waiting for God to call him. So that he stopped using the powers that belong to Satan and to come into his kingdom to share the gospel. You and I, we are so privileged, pleased that God has called us and we are born again. Let's hold on to Christ and let's share the message perhaps uh, to people like this uh, Buddha priest or the fetish priest. And there are many people we have as friends and colleagues, even some uh, family members who are so relying on the powers of Satan. Uh, uh, to do things, let's tell them to turn to God, the judge of all, the creator of the universe. There is no power greater than that of God. Tonight, turn from the power of Satan to the power of God. Forsake Satan's power and make good use of God's uh, power. Let's, uh, it, there is also a call that we should receive forgiveness of sins. We should receive forgiveness of sins. Our title for our discussion is simple. The callings of God. The call to be born again. The call to turn from darkness to light. The call to receive God's power. The call to, to, to receive forgiveness. And the call as you go through and you serve the Lord. To also receive your reward from the Lord. So let's look at the last but one. The call to receive forgiveness of sins. How? A simple Christ has died for our sins, uh, but confession is necessary. The book of, uh, uh, let's go to Luke chapter 4. Uh, the book of Luke chapter 4, sorry, the book of 24. Uh, the book of uh, uh, Luke 24, Christ commissioned the disciples to do that. Luke 24, he said that as you are witnesses and as you preach the gospel, yeah, that people can uh, receive repentance. Okay, so 45, 45, Luke 24, 45 says, Then Christ opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. That's all we've been saying. It's another calling that once you are born again, you know, prayers must be said so that your mind will be open to understand, right? The word of God, the power of God, the glory of God. The things pertaining to kingdom. And this is I, I always achieved through uh, prayers. And so here Christ uh, opened the minds of the disciples so that they could understand the scripture. And if you are struggling with that uh, at that service, uh, you can give me a call or message me. We can look into that. Or perhaps this can also be one of the prayer topics for the uh, intercessors, for all church members, that their minds be opened to understand the word of God, but to encourage you, don't don't be a hardcore Christian. Don't rebel. Don't resist. If you hear His word, respond, and that itself tells God that you want to understand. But when you hear His word and you resist and you despise it, you are telling God that you don't want further revelation. So the church may pray for you, the priest may pray for you, the pastor may pray for you, but God won't answer because you yourself. They have not demonstrated to God that they want to answer. We see here the disciples really wanted to. The 44 said, Then Christ opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. 46, He told them, 
This is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So, so the call to repent and to receive forgiveness is key. And if your sins are not forgiven, you will not make it to heaven. You will not inherit eternal life. The book of First John 1, 8 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a lie. And his word is not in us. Chapter 2 verse 1 to 2. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody sins, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. He is the atoning sacrifice. You don't need to offer any sacrifice anymore. Either lamb or cow or sheep or whatever animal. Christ has done this and once and for all. And as you confess your sins, you receive forgiveness from him. And if your sins are not forgiven, you will miss paradise and sin will block. Sin will block you your blessings as a child of God. Proverbs tell, uh, tells us, whoever will conceal his sin or her sin shall never prosper. And sin can be a downfall of many people. God is calling people to receive forgiveness of sins. Peter preached this on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, 36 to 41. 3,000 people received the message and they were included uh, to the membership. This message must also go out. Don't die in your sins. My brother, my sister, don't die in your sins. Come to Christ and receive forgiveness. Tell your friends, colleagues, family members. They should not die in their sins. And if they say they have not sinned, they deceive themselves. And the word of God has no place in them. Confess to God. And I think on Tuesday we looked at the, the, the importance of confessing your sins to your partner or someone you've wronged. It's far better to receive forgiveness than to hide it and die in your sins and miss the paradise of God. Christ has died for our sins. We must receive them and confess so that we'll be blessed. And sin will not be our downfall. People don't play sin. Sin is very dangerous. Sin is, if sin can send you to hell, then just imagine what sin can do to you whilst you are alive. So, 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 and so it calls us. And God... I uh, want all of us to receive forgiveness. Let's look at the final calling. Of course, someone will say that what about the calling to become a minister of the gospel or to serve God? You see, it is a sequence. To serve God, God won't just call you. He calls you. He redeems you from darkness, right? And then you are born again. He changes your mind, puts his spirit in you before you serve him. right? I, I, I met quite a lot of people. They just want to serve God. It is a process. So you go through the redemption before service. And so far, what we've been discussing, we've been looking at the redemption all along. The redemption, you are born again. You, are, you, you turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God. And have forgiveness of sins. Then God now sends you and say, go and do more. And most people don't want to go through the process. And so they are not effective. And I think as a church, uh, hopefully, once church reopens next month, we'll make sure that all those who are seven, they are truly born again, uh, that they have come out from darkness, and they have stopped following Satan, so that they can serve God. And once you go through the process, you'll be very, very effective. The reason why many people uh, are, are fall is simple because that they are their redemption, you uh, know, uh, if you like, is very, very weak or uncompleted. They've not been truly sanctified, hence uh, they remain under the influence of the, of the enemy. And so let's look at the last call, receiving a place among those sanctified. And here we are talking about a reward from God that those who serve him faithfully shall receive. And this is the same uh, language God uh, used on Joshua, the high priest, in the days of Zechariah. When the Jews returned to Jerusalem in building and rebuilding the temple. 
uh, we are rewarded by God if we obey him in carrying out his duty on that. So let's see uh, Zechariah 3, uh, 6 to 7. Zechariah 3, uh, 6 to 7. So you are redeemed before you serve God. When you are redeemed from darkness, from the power of Satan, you're born again, receive forgiveness, and then you serve God. Now when you remain faithful serving God, then you are rewarded. Okay, so, uh, so, so that's the sequence. Zechariah 3, it's good we start from verse 1, and then we end uh, here uh, on verse 7. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest, not Joshua who I took over from Moses, but Joshua the high priest uh, after the uh, uh, at the return of the of the captives. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, "The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you." It's not this man a burning stick snatched from fire. So Satan was right there accusing Joshua of all his sins. And the Lord had to rebuke Satan and say, but this man was on his way to hell. So what's your problem? We know he's a sinner. So what is your problem? And now three explains uh, what happened to us further. It says, now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said to those who were standing before him, Take off his filthy clothes. That is his sins, right? Always make sure your sins are cleansed. Take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, See, I have taken away your sin, and I will put fine garments on you. Then I said, Put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. Six. The angel of the Lord gave this child to Joshua, this is what the Lord Almighty says. If you walk in obedience to me and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have a charge of my courts. And I will give you a place among these standing here. The same phrase Paul used in Acts 26, 16 to 18. That if you are faithful to God as a believer. So we see that he was a sinner. His sins were taken away. A new garment was put on him. Now God commissioned him that if you remain faithful to me. And so that is where the service comes. And God is calling everyone to go through the process and serve him. We are the one we win souls. We build temples for God. We help people. We disciple people. We live a holy life. We are the, the ambassadors of Christ on earth. We are God's believers. We are the salt and the light of the world. And as we remain faithful to what God wants us to do. Then we get our rewards. And this is also a calling. And I'm sure there are many of you. You are born again. God has taken you from there. From darkness to light. But you are truly yet to serve. You are truly yet to win souls. You are truly yet to make any positive contribution. To the kingdom of our father. There are many opportunities. Win souls. Tell people about Christ. Bring them to church. Give good offering. Give good tithes, make good donations, help people in your community, live a holy life. These are the things God expects from us as believers. And as we do that, we shall be rewarded handsomely by God. And it's a calling, all of us, all of us. And for me, for years now, I've taken this assignment very, very serious. And I'll continue until the Lord calls me home. And this is what St. Paul did. And this is what he has to say. Let's read 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. And now even as we read this text, it's my prayer that this will also be your testimony. That you have fought the fight. You've kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. So St. Paul speaking here. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. And I pray that this will be your testimony. Don't forget, whatever you do in this world, that is your testimony. It's been written in heaven, right? God has seen it. 
It's not what you only think or what is in your heart. What about you do? And Paul here, so confidently, is saying, I'm being poured out like a drink offering. The time has come for me to, de uh, to depart from this world. He said, I have fought the good fight. It's not every fight that you fight. Fight good fight. Some of you, uh, even if you see a house fly, you want to fight the house fly. Who will reward you? Fight the good fight. I'll take time to expl explain some of these things one of the days. That is not every fight we fight. Right? There are a lot of good things in life that you must focus on. It's not every fight we fight. There are some people just let them go. Fast Christ says that there are some people when they slap you here, give this place to them. Let them do so. Why? If they slap you and you slap them back, they will distract you. Some people don't have any aim in life. They are coming to distract you from you fighting a good fight. So some of us will just look at you and say goodbye. You don't have any uh, good thing to offer. And then he said, I have finished the race. I finish it. I finish it. I finish it. And he was so sure. Uh, he said, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all those who have longed for his appearance. Now, if you take your time to live well and to serve God, you can make said bold confessions. Your spirit, your soul, they will be in agreement with all that you say. In fact, they will speak. The spirit of the Lord in you will cry out, Abba, Father. Because when you came into this world, you are responding to God's calling. You were born again. You, were, you turned from darkness to light. You turned from the influence of Satan to the power of God. And you obey God in serving him. The New Testament, we win souls. We build temples. We help people. We live the holy life. We are the light and the salt of the world. We are the peacemakers. We are the one that Christ can call my people. We are the ambassadors of the living Christ. Paul would say that. Receiving a place among those sanctified. He's not the only one. He said for all those who have longed for the appearing of our Lord. Brothers and sisters, we started the teaching by saying that. A, 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 a very simple news I listened to. Not, I think yesterday or the day before. That a fetish of voodoo priest I said he's waiting for God to call him. From following darkness to following Christ. And he himself criticized believers. Who have left God's way to follow the enemy. And so this uh, evening our focus has been on, on God's calling. That he calls us to be born again. He calls us to turn from darkness to light. He calls us to turn from the power of Satan to the power of God. He calls us to receive uh, forgiveness of sins in Christ. He calls us to serve him so that we shall be rewarded. And it's my prayer that all of us will take this message home powerfully i think we did not treat the second bit uh taking from ephesians ephesians chapter i think 4 verse 27 where it says do not give the devil a foothold do not give the devil a foothold there are some of you you are born again god lost but you've given the enemy a foothold into your life and so the enemy is really really you know harming you and you don't know that if i allow the enemy to enter your heart to enter your mind, to enter your household, to enter your marriage, to enter your finances, to enter your faith. The Bible says, do not give the devil a foothold. Let me mention what a foothold is and then we will close. A foothold can be best understood by imagining yourself being chased by a bad person. You run up to your room and try to close the door, but the person sticks his shoe at the bottom end of the door so you cannot close it. That part of his foot that prevents you from closing the door effectively it's called a foothold so you cannot so there is a, a little bit gap where the enemy and all the the uh, cockroaches and the mouse and everything cannot enter your room right so you have allowed the enemy to do that and the enemy is just serving evil and it was just entering because you have given the enemy a foothold if God will permit Next week, Thursday, I'll be, we'll be looking at how not to give the devil a foothold in your life. But for the meantime, as usual, if you have any question, you can message me and we can have a good uh, conversation. May the Lord bless you. Let me say hello to a few people online. As usual, let's greet uh, ourselves. Uh, it's one way of staying 
uh, in fellowship. So let me say hello to the few people who have uh, who are online as usual. And so let's see, we have a few people online already in the name of Jesus. So we have quite a lot. Okay, so we have Elon, uh, Akolache, Essa from Ghana. God bless you. And we have Christabel. God bless you. We have uh, Caroline, uh, Suan from New Zealand. God bless you. And uh, she's put something. We decree and declare everything that has been spoken. And this powerful message to be fully embedded upon both my son and my spiritual life daily and constantly mentally, physically, emotionally. And so he received, we receive everything that, yes. So, uh, Carolyn, yes, we send you God's blessings as well. And we have a message from Dorcas and Susanna. They are using my account. And Mommy and Nathan. And they are saying God will bless everyone and be happy and good to God. And 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 I'm on your tablet. I'm sure Dorcas is doing that. And we have Felicia Boche also saying God bless you, uh, Bishop. God bless you, Felicia. And... Stephanie Amma Bright is also saying, I'm a bishop. Crystal Bell, say God bless you, bishop. God bless you, Crystal Bell. And Kwesi Henry, say shalom, bishop. God bless you. So, Henry, God bless you. We have Enyunam watching with us. Sharon watching with watching with us. Esther saying God bless you best. Is also sending greetings. And Sydney Smith is also sending greetings. Yasmin and the family are sending greetings. And... Regina Kwako is also sending greetings. Johnny Johnson says, Amen, Bishop. And Paulina Mills says, God bless you, Bishop. Nina is also sending a message. And Julia is also sending a message. Faith Parsons says, God bless you, Bishop. And Brother Edison Pira is also watching with us. And we have the many, many people watching with us. So I will leave you tonight with God's blessings and how we can re respond to God's call, all the calls to be born again. To move from darkness to light and to move from Satan's influence to God's power. To receive forgiveness of sins and to receive our rewards uh, as we serve the Lord faithfully. May the Lord bless you and keep you safe. Shalom. We shall meet again on Sunday. Amen.